one of the great blindnesses. And I think humanity is going to look back um, at this, at the thousands of years of violating uh, animals from other species. If we were looking at it another planet, if one species on another planet was doing what we do to non-human animals and we saw it from a distance, um, we'd be appalled, but we're desensitized. So meat eaters on this planet average about 7,000 animals in a lifetime. And for me personally, this is the um, place of seeing uh, bias and overcoming uh, this tendency to create unreal other. This is the one that's actually the hardest for me to talk about. And I wanted to name that with you because um, I care a lot. It's very emotional in me. It's like um, sensing a concentration camp in my backyard that is just going on and on and on um, with all the suffering of, of animals. And it's hard to talk about because we as a collective are so habituated to othering animals that it's often not that conscious. There's an assumption they're just not as important. They're more important things. And we're not habituated to seeing the daily violence that goes into our daily diet. Like we don't connect the dots. And um, we don't want to feel bad about ourselves. So when the topic comes up, there's a defendedness. And um, either we feel guilty deep down that we're participating in something wrong or we're outraged that another person's trying to make us feel morally wrong. So there's a lot of um, bombs that can go off in, in this territory of othering. So my hope is that as we, each of us sincerely wants to widen the circles of our heart, that we can explore this too together um, without um, guilt or shame but really asking the same questions. Where does it hurt? Can we look at where it hurts for these other animals? Um, and can we see the gold? Can we see the sacredness of life? Share a bit about my own story, my own unfolding in this domain. Because um, I figured, I, I just wanted to be real personal about it in this, in this class. Um, that I became a vegetarian when I was 21, when I joined a spiritual community. So that's almost 45 years ago, I'm 65. And between now and then I've been a vegetarian except for a handful of years when I got sick and I started eating chicken and fish because I thought that was going to help and it didn't. And then I went back to being vegetarian and then I became vegan um, because the more I learned about the meat industry, the more um, what I thought was vegetarian and wasn't causing as much harm was actually no different. Um, I remember um, one time being at a retreat uh, down at this really beautiful center in the Shenandoah. And during our early morning hours, there's a lot of farmland around, uh, we could hear the sounds of these mother cows lowing. Uh, they had just been separated the week earlier from their calves, and um, so they were grieving. And as many of you know, in the meat and dairy industry, farmers continually impregnate cows, and then they separate from the calves, and then impregnate them again, and separate them. And there's a, a deep mother-child attachment, like in all mammals. So listening to this. I mean, you can imagine sitting in this early morning meditation and that's the sound we're hearing is this grieving cries of mother cows. And it broke my heart and it broke other people's hearts. In fact, we started in the afternoon doing a loving kindness practice for them and, and so on. But it was really the first time that I imagined close in, where does it hurt? that these were real beings, sentient beings, and they were suffering. Um, so over recent years, as I mentioned, I've, I've learned more. And for a while I was eating eggs as being a vegetarian, and then I found out that no matter where we get them, organic, free range, etc., when the chickens hatch, 
when the baby chickens hatch from their eggs, all the, ma all the males are ground up alive. And check it out. That just happens. It's like it, at all, even the most organic free-range places, that's what they do with the male babies. They just grind them up alive. And um, the females, then their beaks are cut because they're in such squash quarters that they would scratch each other too much of this, so they get their beaks cut. So I've never toured an industrial farm or slaughterhouse, but I have watched films, and I do it on purpose because I feel like part of waking up out of bias is learning to look right into where the suffering is that we're not willing to look at. So I've kind of sat through them. And of course they're horribly disturbing. Like if I imagine my dog going through what these other mammals are going through and, um, you know, in some way living in a tiny pen so it can't move and then you know, being herded and terrified into a slaughter, like they ground them up and they know what's going on because other, other animals are being killed right by them. It's inconceivable. So I mentioned that I, I t it's so hard for me to talk about because um, it makes me weep. And um, so I have this prayer that more and more we'll move towards uh, a plant-based diet not a rigidity like everyone should be a vegan. It's not that. It's can we collectively open our eyes to suffering and respond by moving in a direction. Um, some people do it for because they're, they really get the effect on planet Earth. It's this considered the second um, mo biggest environmental hazard to the Earth, the first being fossil fuels. Some do it for health, but for whatever the reason, it's part of compassion to, to widen that circle. So we're exploring unreal othering and how to come above the line, wake up out of it, and to know that all unreal othering is interconnected. So whether we're unreal othering someone in our family because they're not cooperating, or someone who's perceived of difference for their race or their religion, all of it reinforces the same contraction of the heart, disconnection from compassion. I was reading uh, Dr. A. Breeze Harper, and she's the author of, Sis of Sista Vegan. She's, it's a book about black vegan black female vegans. Well, she organized a conference, and it's called The Vegan Praxis, Praxis of Black Lives Matters. And it's really cool because as she's show, the whole purpose of the conference is to show anti-racism work goes hand in hand with the dismantling of all oppressive systems, including those that abuse and oppress non-human animals. Dick Gregory says this, he says, animals and humans suffer and die alike. Violence causes the same pain, the same spilling of blood, the same stench of death, the same arrogant, cruel, and brutal taking of life. We don't have to be part of it. So we close together with the reflection of how individually and collectively we can deepen our commitment to caring in action, to waking up these hearts. And we begin by just remembering that the path of awakening compassion has to be compassionate. In other words, we can't guilt ourselves or blame ourselves because that just deepens the same suffering. Instead, it's that very sincere question, where does it hurt? You might remember the poet Warshan Shire, she was born in Kenya, and she's a British writer. So she lived in both a dominant culture, which is kind of earmarked by greed and exploitation, and a non-dominated, violet, violated culture. Here's what she writes. They set my aunt's house on fire. I cried the way women on TV do, folding at the middle like a five-pound note. I called the boy who used to love me, tried to say, okay, my voice, I said, hello. He said, Warson, what's wrong? What's happened? 
I've been praying, and these are what my prayers look like. Dear God, I come from two countries. One is thirsty, the other is on fire. Both need water. Later that night, I held an atlas in my lap, ran my fingers across the whole world and whispered, where does it hurt? It answered, everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Our hearts are not free if there's any part of this living world we're excluding. The hope of our humanity is that activists will get spiritual, will go for this all-inclusive, all-inclusive compassion. And those that are waking up their hearts will know to bring it into the world actively. Mm.